Hey everybody, welcome to part two of my dethatch video. Uh, if you want to see me, the process uh, of me dethatching my lawn, um, take a look at part one and you can see what the thatch looks like when it comes up and how much I got out of there. Um, in this video, I'm going to provide a little more content about thatch and some thoughts I have about why Alaska might be a little more susceptible to thatch buildup. And also I'm going to show you a cross section of my own lawn before I dethatched it um, to take a look at exactly what the thatch looks like here and how it might be different from other places. So stick around. Thatch is typically defined as the layer of organic material, uh, typically dead, but I think can also be some living material that resides uh, directly above your soil horizon at the base of the turf. The organic material that makes up thatch is typically from grass itself, and it could be all parts of the grass plant, including the root system but also includes any other organics that get added to it, um, which I guess would include leaves and things like, in my case, pine cones. And basically, if you have more accumulation of thatch material than you have the processing of it, then you're going to accumulate it over time where, to where it's unhealthy for the growth of your lawn. So the processing of thatch can be done in a couple of different ways. Um, by processing I mean decomposition. You can have physical decomposition which is just uh, you take or any first of all any organic material that was living and is now dead is going to immediately start to dry out. It's going to lose uh, internal moisture and that's going to aid in the process of breaking it down physically. When you add to that additional environmental conditions like uh, freezing and thawing or wetting and drying out um, those actions can also speed up the process of breaking organic material down and it would also include like, any kind of physical action on it to help break it down so over time these different environmental processes will help to break material down into smaller pieces that are that are more readily available to be processed by uh, the other the other way to break down organics which is a uh, biological process and that would include things like microbes and bacteria and fungus that work on organic material to break it down further into uh, nutrients in the soil that is readily available for the plants so the definition that I gave earlier of thatch is a common definition and seems most in most common cases, a thatch layer should be a relatively loose layer of different pieces of organics that are just kind of put together into a layer. Um, in the case here, in my lawn, what I see is more of a tightly woven, almost fabric at the top of the soil that seems like it's mostly root material that's a lot harder to penetrate. And so I've seen different parts of the United States, the lower 48, where you should be able to take your finger and you penetrate through the turf, through break through the thatch layer and be able to you know get access to loose soil right there beneath the thatch. But that's not the case here. There's, like I said, almost a tightly woven fabric that's really more difficult to get through and it takes some effort to poke through to get to the loose soil below. And I don't know if that's a common occurrence or if that's more unique here or if there's been thing going on specifically in my lawn that has caused maybe roots to intertwine at a higher level horizontally than is the case elsewhere. Because I don't really have anything to compare this to except what I observe right here and what I can find you know on the internet and so I also wanted to touch on 
the process a little bit, this biological process that breaks soil down or breaks thatch down, that process benefits from higher temperatures. So the warmer it is, these little bugs and, and bacteria and fungus are more readily available. They're much more active when the temperatures are higher. So as temperatures go up, the activity increases and there's more thatch breakdown biologically than otherwise. And so here in Alaska, we don't have high temperatures. We get up to typically in the summertime, um, 70s maybe in July and in June and July. We might hit 80 a couple times. And so we have, we're not really reaching that zone of optimal activity for the processes that are going to really break thatch down. Plus, we have a limited season. We're frozen for a lot longer than lawns in the lower 48 are going to be frozen, if they are at all. And so I feel like those factors, along with um, you know, extended daylight here that might push additional growth. So even though we have a shortened growing season and a shortened thatch burning season, we might have a pushed growth because it's, there's more daylight here than somewhere in the lower 48. And we also don't have a dormant season during the heat of the summer because we don't really have a heat of the summer. So whereas in the Midwest or East Coast maybe where a lawn will go dormant for a while where it's not pushing growth or creating more um, accumulation, it's definitely going to be burning thatch. So it's, it's, it's working on one end and not working on the other end. Whereas here, we're just accumulating, we're growing, we're growing, we're growing and we're not burning as much because our temperatures are lower. So those are just some thoughts that I had on uh, the environment here and why there could be some greater accumulation of thatch um, than maybe in other places in the U.S. Um, and why it might be necessary to dethatch the lawn yearly or at least maybe every other year uh, to be on that kind of a schedule. Additionally, there are some grasses that are more likely to produce thatch or do produce thatch more easily than others and those are Kentucky bluegrass, um, red fescues, um, which is what typically we have here. At least that's, I'm pretty sure, what I have mostly in my lawn. And so those are two that are known as the thatchier grasses, producing grasses. So there's also that factor. So after having said that, now I just want to roll the video I have of the cross section of a piece of turf that I took. This was right before I dethatched the lawn recently. I just dug up uh, a little cross section of the turf and soil and tried to put it on camera and kind of messed around with it a little bit. So I'm going to roll that and the camera footage is not the greatest, but uh, bear with it. Um, I thought it was pretty cool and um, interesting to see, you know, what exactly is going on in there. So I'm going to roll that now. Okay, so I'm just going to talk over these clips that I have as they play. This is the little triangle of turf that I removed from the lawn before I did the dethatching. And you can see this little layer at the top that's maybe... Uh, a slightly lighter brown color. Uh, that is what I believe is the actual thatch layer. It's uh, the coloration difference, I think, is partly because of the lime that I put in the lawn a few weeks before I did the dethatching. Um, I put down an application of granular as well as liquid lime, which both basically turn into a powder. And that's what I think you're looking at there and the, the slight change in color as that powder starts to work its way down through the fat through the through the turf into the soil and it in this case got kind of caught up in that thatch layer. 
the thatch layer here looks to be about a half inch to three quarters inch thick. I can't believe I actually didn't put a ruler up to it to check it, but it looks like that's what it is. And most references say that you want your thatch to be about a half inch or less. A little bit of thatch is good to help protect your lawn, your grass, um, but too much is will really start to choke the lawn off from nutrients and moisture. So here I'm just kind of checking out the surface of the turf, seeing what's exactly in there. Um, and unfortunately, it looks like there's a fair amount of moss in this little tiny chunk of turf. I'm going to kind of try to pull one strand out, uh, one blade, uh, well, one spore, I guess, of moss and uh, take a look at it. That particular piece uh, looks to be more or less dead, but there's a lot of green, healthy moss in there, unfortunately. Um, I had just tried to kill all the moss in the lawn um, a couple videos ago. I thought I was more successful than I actually was. Um, I could see some brown and black moss in the, in the lawn, but um, this little section here that I'm looking at had a lot of green in it. And also when I did the actual dethatching, I could see a lot of green moss looking pretty healthy, uh, unfortunately. So I'm going to have to rethink that a little bit if I need to. Um, and so this is eventually I'm going to put the camera down and use both hands on this. Uh, here's some more moss that I've found. So now I'm just kind of working this over, taking a look at it. Um, I'm going to kind of work my finger through the top. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, it's not really easy to penetrate through the thatch layer with your finger. And so I'm just going to kind of work it here uh, with the one hand anyway um, until I put the camera down and, and take a look at this. And I'm going to kind of tear it apart when I, once I get both hands on it and get a closer look at the, the material that's in there and kind of dissect it a little bit. You may have noticed that not a whole lot of soil has come loose out of this clump. Uh, it's all pretty, pretty well woven together with root mass all the way down. Um, not a lot of just bare loose soil, which is probably, I'm assuming that's common in a in turf that you're going to get uh, grass roots down holding soil together but in this case it might be a little more a little bit tighter than normal and now so i'm just ripping the thatch what i'm calling the thatch layer uh apart from the i guess soil horizon if you want to call it that um, but it's more like a root mass um, just kind of ripping that top part off where there seemed to be sort of a plane of weakness there below the thatch and above that soil root mass um, to get a better look at what's really making up this thatch layer as we as I kind of rip into it and pull it apart. It's kind of amazing how it's all stayed together this long with me kind of manhandling the whole thing so much and after removing it from the lawn, um, removing it from the structure of the lawn, um, so now I really just, I'm, I'm just trying to tear it apart on a smaller scale and s really try to figure out what's inside there, what's, what's making this thatch up. And I can really see why it's basically choking off the lawn with how thick and tight it is. And this is, this is a good view of, of on a smaller scale what's really inside this uh, sort of fabric that's in my lawn. And also notice that zero soil has actually come out of this section of the turf as I've been messing with it. It's all organic-y stuff. So now I'm going to take a closer look at this bottom section of the cross section that I have. Um, and oh, there's uh, some a root of some kind in there that I pulled out. Um, this bottom section 
this is the fascinating part right here where there's actually pine cones at the top of it. And this really kind of fascinated me um, just because there were two pine cones there at the top that had worked their way through that thick thatch layer somehow. And it just makes me wonder how long that process takes. You know, what year are those pine cones from? Was it just from last year? Um, how long did it take them to get to work their way down through all that? They're pretty broken up. Um, so that was just interesting to me. And so in, you know, messing with this lower section some more, I just kind of wonder is, you know, would this be also considered thatch? I don't think so, but I'm not, you know, entirely sure. Um, I don't, I keep saying, I don't really have, uh, anything to compare this to, um, but, oh, so here's another pine cone. This one, a little higher up in the cross section. This is in the thatch, quote unquote, thatch layer. Um, and you can see that it's uh, not nearly as decomposed as the two pine cones that were found. Gosh, only, what, maybe half an inch, three quarters of an inch lower um, that had made it through that layer and were a lot, you know, coloration was a lot darker and they were a lot less structurally sound this one <clears throat> this pine cone um is a is more brown it's more solid um and i don't know this whole the pine cone thing i've been thinking a lot about for some reason since i did this it just makes me want to do like a, you know an experiment on pine cone migration through uh, turf into the soil kind of thing but so now we've got uh, some kind of worm that I found in there it doesn't look to be alive right now um, but this thing probably will have something to do with uh, moths that I will find in the yard in a couple of months I'm guessing some type of grub worm or web worm um, who knows? Um, yeah, so that's about it. This, uh, look at that. Just a, so much, so much organics in this little section of, of turf. Um, it's amazing. Thank you so much for watching this video. Much appreciated. Um, keep checking back. More content coming. Videos coming out all summer long. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.